this looks great. Six minute video called Be Brave. No, I haven't. We'll do maybe we'll do that one after. I know what it's all right. Prager you time. We haven't done this in a while. Yeah, more like Jimmy Bohr. True. True. I, I can't stand it. I can't listen to Jimmy Dore. It's so boring. Nikki? I don't, who's Nikki Haley? Who's this person again? I always... There's too many people to keep track of. Who's Nikki Haley? Who the fuck is this person? Oh. Former governor of South Carolina? Oh, she's like a super... Is she like a QAnon or something? Wait, wait. This was... Wasn't this the one who quoted... Uh, Wasn't this the person who quoted the fucking... No, okay, this is not the same person who fo who quoted Hitler. Okay, never mind. I was thinking this is the one who quoted Hitler. Let's watch this. Let's watch, watch. It's watch. like to walk into a room where plain truth seems like a foreign concept, where just speaking your mind can feel daunting, where the founding principles of the United States of America are openly ridiculed. For Two years I served as the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. Just to give you an idea of how strange things can get at the U.N., consider that the human... Oh, yeah, you're right. Here, let me turn it down. Sorry. Thank you, Vermin. Appreciate that. ...rights council is dominated by some of the world's worst human rights offenders, countries like China, Cuba, and Venezuela. Already, already out the gate. <laughs> True democracy. Vuvuzuela, right out the, right out the gate, right out the gate. It's like Israel, a routine. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Israel has second class citizens. They are literally an apartheid state. Are you fucking kidding me? What? Literal apartheid state, a true democracy like Israel, where one, where a part of your population is barred from citizenship because of the color of their skin. Keenly abused. And America, the nation that has protected the God-given rights of hundreds of millions of people all over the globe, is openly criticized. Why am I telling you this? Because most college campuses have become as anti-American which is to say morally backward as the UN and the only maybe you weren't the best pick to be ambassador to the UN if you think the UN is just a giant pile of shit and if you treat other people with different perspectives as like morally backward savages maybe you are just a very bad ambassador person who can set it right side up is you if that sounds like I'm asking you to shoulder a heavy burden, that's because I am. I wouldn't be asking if I didn't think you were up to it. Uh-oh. I fully believe that you are. Uh-oh. I've spoken at a lot of colleges. I'm convinced that most of the students still have a strong, intuitive love of our country. That's why I'm optimistic about America's future. But I know that it's hard to speak out. I know the academic establishment is against you. I didn't say oh this was going to be easy. It is, go. however, going to be necessary. So what is it that I'm asking you to do? Yeah, hat came be off Be brave. Defend your right to speak out. Defend America. To your friends, in class, around campus, wherever you go. Always be defending America. Oh, boy. Oh Speaking boy. out oh boy. doesn't mean being rude. And, of course, it never means resorting to violence. Except when it does, right, Prager you? Except when you actively urge your followers onto violence. Hmm. It means having the facts and saying the truth with clarity and purpose. And if you're saying the truth, don't back down. Even if your classmates or professor, or in my case, the representatives of 193 governments, off, yep. try to make you look foolish. Defending America means you need to know. Ignore everyone. Listen only to Prager you. You are a patriot. You are good. This is like a hypnosis video. I'm not kidding you. These videos are like hypnosis videos for American patriots. American history. Given how poorly induction. that history is taught these days, you might have to supplement your education. Start with the primary sources. The Declaration of Independence. <sighs> Ha 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 ha!
Start with the primary sources. Read the Declaration of Independence from the beginning to end. You will know so much. The Constitution, the Federalist Papers, George, <laughs> George Washington's farewell speech, the Gettysburg Address, <laughs> and Lincoln's second inaugural. These are just speeches. These are just like famous speeches. And build out from there. Discover America's history for yourself. Make up your own mind. Always remember. Make up your own mind by listening only to Prager U, by ignoring all of your friends and family, by ignoring everyone who is concerned about you. Only Prager U will give you the truth. That you're comparing America to reality, not to utopia. Also remember that you what? have to judge people in the context of their time. Look, they're literally, think for yourself, but think for yourself in the exact way that we tell you to. Only consider them in the standards of their time. Only Not consider by the standards of our time. If you do that, I have every confidence you'll find yourself loving this country as much as I do. <laughs> Listen, think for yourself, but I know that if you're not an idiot, you will love America, right? Think for yourself, but if you don't come to the same conclusion as me, you're a stupid moron. America has a great story to tell, but first you have to have the courage to tell it. What the fight for racial equality was to prior generations, the fight for free speech and intellectual freedom is to your generation. You are on the front line. You are the rebel. Never <laughs> You are the rebel supported by the executive wing of the government. For in my lifetime, can I remember when more Americans were as stifled or as constantly told what they're allowed to think and what they're allowed to say? And what are we allowed to say in America? What sorts of fashionable ideas are considered sophisticated by our top universities? So often, they're the very same ones espoused by the thugs on the Human Rights Council. What? That America Isn't is the U.S. on the Human Rights Council? Racist. That capitalism, the only economic system to lift billions of people out of poverty, is the source of our problems. That socialism is bliss. That freedom of speech... <laughs> is not that important. What? These are very bad ideas. All right, maybe, They're also maybe. dead wrong. There is no question that America can and should improve. That's the hard work we have in front of us. But the constant slandering of American democracy and the opportunity- Oh, I hate human rights thugs. ...it offers to everyone is a one-way street to a much worse future. <laughs> What is this fucking, what is this image? We don't need to remake America into something different. America isn't perfect. It's also not an accident that we are the most generous, most prosperous, and most free country for people of every race, ethnicity, and religion. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? That's, yeah, citation needed. In world history. In my time, there's the buzzword that lets them get away with it in world history. I'm in the UN. I got to know countries where there are no protections for speech. Countries where you risk a lot more than online harassment or a bad grade if you oppose the ruling party positions. Everything of value comes with. Yeah. You mean like America? You mean like America, where if you lose an election, a bunch of fucking boat ownership hillbillies will rush into the capital and try to kill you? The price. But that price will be worth it. Because America is worth it. Speaking the truth is often difficult, so it takes courage to do so. Many have died to preserve America and liberty. No one's asking- Only Jewish people and Christians. Not a single other thing in here. No other symbols. Just Jewish people and Christians. You to risk your life, but it is now your generation's turn to step up or you will lose both your country and your freedom. I'm Nikki Haley for Prager University. Jesus Christ. This video was- Shut the fuck up. All right, we got enough time for one more. We got enough time for one more, I think. Big Green? What is Big Green? Oh my god. Oh my god. 
Oh, we'll see you soon, Haley. We'll be doing more pa po we'll be doing more politics later. Look, this one's short. This is perfect. Let's do it. You've heard a lot about big oil, big pharma, big tech, and all the other big bad players out there. I want to talk to you about the biggest. Hey, thank you so much, Comrade Anthony, for the very generous you five dollars. Thank you so States much. Never did a genocide because if it had the Constitution, true. Would have said you gotta so. read the Constitution. It'll tell you everything about America. It's baddest one of them all. This Goliath doesn't deal in billions; it deals in trillions. I'm talking about Big Green. Yes. the environmental movement. It's the richest, most powerful big in the world right now. The most powerful no big in the world? What is this language? This is literally sounds like fucking newspeak. Holy shit. It's the biggest, it is the biggest big in the whole world. Nothing else even comes close. Until we see it for what it is and rein it in, it's going to get even bigger. And as is usually the case, bigger is not always better. You see, Big Green wants to take over your life. It has to. This makes perfect sense. Big Green. <laughs> Let me just tell you, there is no argument. It just, trust me, bro, it makes sense. It's the biggest big and rules your life. And trust me, that makes sense. I, th I feel like your argument fails if you have to tell people that your argument makes sense instead of just letting it be self-evident that your argument makes sense after all intends to save the planet from oblivion your freedom would seem to be a small price to pay to a your freedom what your freedom to like like belch poison gas into your neighbor's house what are you talking about bush its mission big green needs two things money and power it already has a lot of both, but it's hungry for much more. Who do we mean when we say big- Look at all those arms and bags of monies. Green. Oh my God. We mean oh the no. major organizations that set the agenda for the movement. This would include, among dozens, Greenpeace, 350.org. I'm sorry, how big is Greenpeace? How big is Greenpeace? I'm sorry, let's, let's find out. Let's find out live. Let's look up Greenpeace here. Greenpeace.org. Here we go. Where's the fucking Wikipedia page for Greenpeace? Budget, $236.9 million as of 2011 with 2,400 staff. Okay, uh, let's pick one oil company, uh, Exxon. Let's look up Exxon Mobil. Where's our Wikipedia page for Exxon Mobil? Number of employees. <clears throat> let's go down here. Where's the info? Revenue, two point two two hundred and sixty four point nine billion dollars in twenty nineteen alone. How many employees? Where's the employee count? Seventy four thousand, almost almost seventy five thousand employees. Total assets, $362.6 billion. That's one oil company. And they're listing Greenpeace as Big Green. Idiots. Nature Absolute Conservancy, idiots. Sierra Club, World Wildlife Fund. WWF is like a zoo foundation. All they do is raise money to like make habitats for pandas. What the fuck are you talking about? And of course... The politicians, bureaucrats, corporations, and media outlets who support and promote their agenda. Before we get any deeper into this, let's stipulate a few things. The climate is changing. It appears, though we can't be sure, to be slowly warming. If it continues to warm, it could cause serious environmental problems sometime in the distant future. Industrialization probably plays a role in this warming process. Uh oh, we can't be sure. Process. Probably. Reasonable people should be able to agree on this. Hmm. Hmm. Democrat leader Nancy Pelosi and Republican leader Newt Gingrich actually once sat down together. Newt Gingrich? Newt Gingrich is irrelevant. That's the best you could get was Newt Gingrich? We're talking about, listen. I don't know love lost for fucking Nancy Pelosi, but 
Holy fucking shit. Nancy Pelosi is the Speaker of the House. New Grin Gingrich is some irrelevant nobody. I don't even think he's in office anymore. And said as much in a public service ad they made in the 1990s. This is from the 90s. Oh, but Big my Green God. has no interest in being reasonable. Reasonable doesn't get you money. Reasonable doesn't get you power. Brain, so let's talk about the money. Worms. Greenpeace, Nature Conservancy, World Wildlife Fund, and Sierra Club all have financial assets in the 100 to 300 million dollars. Yeah, and guess what? Exxon Mobil alone is worth 362 billion, not million. These are the ones you listed in 100 to 300 million. Exxon Mobil alone is worth 362 billion. Are you fucking kidding me? A range. Name a Fortune 500 company, and chances are they're writing big checks to Big Green. Banking giant Citigroup, for example, has committed $100 billion to combat climate change. Over how many years and under what stipulations? Under what stipulations? But the real money is at the government level. In 2009, the Obama administration directed more than $110 billion to be spent on renewable- Your guy gave two, what, $1.2 trillion in handouts to companies like Walmart and Amazon this year? $1.2 trillion, you fucking idiot. Energy oh my God, investments I'm sorry. Oh. under the American Recovery oh and Reinvestment God. Act alone. What the taxpayer got for this investment other than long forgotten $500 million boondoggles like Solyndra is hard to say. According to the best economic models, the What's Paris Solyndra? Climate Accord will- What the fuck is Solyndra? What is Solyndra? Manufacture of cylindrical panels of copper, iridium, gallium, selenide, thin film, solar cells based in Fremont, California. This is a 1000 employee company. What the fuck? Who cares? This happened in 2015. It's a failed startup. Oh my God. At you on Twitter about Big Green. Check it oh out. Boy, oh boy, Smiley oh boy. face. What have, you, what have you done? Oh no, oh shit. This is what they're afraid of. The Big Green. True! This is the Big Green. Oh no, he's getting hit in the balls with the ball. Whoa! Thank you. That was worth it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the dono and the meme. Appreciate that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amazing. It costs the world $1 to $2 trillion every year. Total cost for the Green New Deal? The world. The entire world would be cost one point two one to $2 trillion. The entire world. $52 trillion. Minimum. Citation needed? But money Citation is only a means needed? to an end. The end is power. The power to transform society into what they think it should be. I like this symbol. Nice, cool symbol. That's what this is really about. Here's how Shoykat Chakrabarty, the architect of the Green New Deal, described it to the Washington Post. It wasn't originally a climate thing at all. We really think of it as a, how do you change the entire economy thing? Maybe you like all this, that's fine. But don't pretend it's about protecting the environment. Chakrabarty was being honest. You should be too. It's about transferring more and more power to the government at every level, federal, state, local. Rock and roll. Thank you so much, Martha. I really appreciate that. Thank you for the $5 dono. Thank you. And the way to get the power is to gin up scary scenarios. The planet is burning. The seas are rising. We're all going to be dead soon unless we listen to those masters of disaster, Al Gore, Bill McKibben, and Greta Thunberg. And what have all their horror stories led to? A generation of young people who- Al Gore was right. Al Gore was right. Like Al Gore was right about everything. What the fuck are you talking about? Who have nightmares so about a Greta planet Thunberg. burning up around them. Yeah, Poor it is. It fucking is. Oh my Poor God. people who pay higher energy bills than they need to because of massive subsidies for wind and solar power. Millions of birds, including endangered ones, dying. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, the, oh. If you build, if you build windmills, there will be birds that will be attacked 
Do you know that birds are windmills' natural predators? Sliced to pieces by wind turbines. Yet in the midst of all the oh planet is God. burning, fear mongering, the world is cleaner, healthier, and richer than it has ever been. These are the people that, that by the way, these are the people that actively back Tyson Foods. That literally has chick chick grinders where they, they dump a bunch of newborn chicks into a giant pit and it just goes and grinds them all up. And these people are like, oh, it's going to kill some birds. Deaths from natural disasters are at all time lows. Here's why. Human beings adapt when faced with climate problems. You want to know why? It's because we put more money towards mitigation of natural disasters. We're really good at it. We've been doing it for thousands of years. Sea levels rising build taller and better seawalls. That's what the Netherlands did. A good chunk of the country, including its international airport, is below sea and level. guess what? Need Those seawalls fail as things get worse. As worse. Water spread the gospel of drip irrigation and desalinization. Israel has more water than it needs, and it's in the middle of a desert. Need clean energy? Build more nuclear power plants. I mean, nuclear power plants are good, but they won't be they won't be set up fast enough. Sweden gets half of its energy from nuclear. Yeah, because they did it like a hundred years ago. None of these simple, practical solutions this makes much of an impact like on Big week. Green. You don't raise money off of common sense, and you don't get political power telling people how good things are, and you certainly don't become famous by being calm. Big Green is not poor, not honest and certainly not powerless. Big Green. Hey, Big Green. This fucking reminds me of Dragon Ball Big Green dub. The ocean dub or whatever. Let's watch this. Do we need to destroy the environment to save it? What? I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what was this again? They went full death cult? Um, is this gonna be, is this gonna be pre-Cambrian fucking Posadism again? Whew, all right, let's find out. That's the question I faced a few years ago. I co-founded a movement that was the precursor to the Green New Deal. It was called the New Apollo Project. If we could send a man to the moon, we reasoned, surely we could save our own planet. All we had to do was harness the power of the- Who's this guy? President Environmental Progress, author Apocalypse Never. What is this, what is environmental progress? This is a uh, this is a fucking grift. I'm oh my god, I bet this is a fucking grift. About the book. This is his book. This is a thing. Why environmental alarmism hurts us all. So in fighting for a greener planet, he helped save the world's last unprotected redwoods. He go created the predecessor to today's green new deal. What 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 does that even mean? What is the predecessor to today's green new deal? Deaths from extreme weather, even in poor nation, declined 80%. That, th that doesn't mean anything. This argument doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that the risk to Earth is bad. Yeah, like what? Wait, Earth Day? Financial interests? Steven Pinker? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, we got some praise from Steven Pinker. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Hmm. It's all the IDW types. Hmm. Wh what? So this is just, so he's just doing a policy. He's just, scroll his Twitter. Okay, let's scroll, let's check his Twitter. Let's check this guy's Twitter and see what he has to say. This is fun. I always love doing this. All right, and I'll check that too. I want to see what you got for me, Haley. Let's check it out. Holy, mo holy motherfucking God. Schellenberger? Oh, this one didn't work. Wait, what's this? 
Let's watch this. Here, wait, wait, wait. Watch this after. I'm going to watch this after. Give me a second. I want to find the Schellenberger guy. Schellenberger MD. Let's find out what he's got to say. Can't wait till Twitter is five people who all agree with each other. Then it will be good. Then at last. President-elect Joe Biden has promised to be present for all people. America needs to find ways to get together. Okay, so there's his uh, please... Please be careful. There's little reason to believe Facebook, Twitter, and all the companies will voluntarily agree to regulation. Congress will need to inquire it. Thus, we'll need to demand it. This must be done before next elections. Okay. That's not actually that bad of a take. Why the fuck would this guy do anything with PragerU? Yeah, the Epstein hypolog. Yeah, he might be a centrist. This seems like, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. These tweets seem like they're written by like a, by like a, a firm. Now they are censoring content and deplatforming users with zero transparency. Oh boy. He's a freedom. So he's an IDW guy. So this guy's like an IDW guy is what we're finding out. Okay. Right. That's what this turns out to be. All right. Let's hear what he has to say. Let's hear his argument. Let's hear his fucking argument. New deal. It was called the new Apollo project. Oh, we wait, we forgot to look up the new Apollo project. What the fuck is the new Apollo project? I got it. I got it fixed. It's all fixed. All right. Let's see. New Apollo program, clean energy, good jobs, uh, back to the moon, new Apollo. Uh, okay, so it seems really irrelevant, and he's just overhyping his own thing. So what it sounds like to me is like this guy is an inspirational speaker guy, like a speaking tour type of guy. And this is his thing that he's like, oh, I came up with this idea before the Green New Deal. That's what it sounds like. The man to the moon, we reasoned, surely we could save our own planet. All we had to do was I don't know how that the makes power sense. of the wind and the sun and get rid of fossil fuels. Compared to the original Apollo mission, how hard could that be? Well, it turned out to be very hard, practically impossible, in fact. The basic laws of physics and chemistry proved to be very stubborn. But as I did more and more research, what? something else began to trouble me. The prospect that pushing the planet toward wind and solar energy would actually cause more harm to the environment than good. Um, there's no better example of this than what wind and solar energy do to birds. Oh my God. It's the same thing. It's the bird thing. Oh my God. It's the bird thing again. Industrial wind turbines, those giant generators of wind power are the greatest new threat to golden and bald eagles. But the eagles are hardly the only wait. Bald eagles are fuck have been fucking poached and po and polluted Oh my God. You, just so you know, listen, I know this because I've lived in a, in a fucking bald eagle sanctuary. The bald eagles are incredibly sensitive to seasonal changes. If there's even small changes in temperature, their eggs don't hatch. You can look this up. Look up how sensitive bald eagles are to environmental changes. This is stupid as fuck. It's not windmills. Condors, owls, hawks, and falcons all fall prey to the turbine's mighty blades. Big wind, and believe me, oh there's a big my, wind industry oh now, my God. just like there's big oil and big pharma, claims that house cats kill more birds than wind turbines. That's true, but whereas cats kill small common birds like sparrows, okay, so I should have just I shouldn't have bothered looking up anything about this guy, and I should have just watched five more minutes of the video. Remind me to never look up shit about fucking Prager U. Kill big, threatened with extinction, and slow to reproduce species like bald eagles and condors. Indeed, industrial Why do wind I even farms try? are killing Why do I even birds. fucking try? The more turbines you put up, the more birds you're going to slaughter. According to the American Bird Conservancy in 2017, research shows that hundreds of thousands hey, of birds maybe, and bats- maybe, maybe, has anybody thought that maybe there's a way to design a turbine that's less likely to harm birds? Maybe they need to paint them different colors. Maybe, yeah, exactly. 
big, every big year wind at it again. They accidentally collide with the turbine blades. That number grows with each turbine built. The Royal Society for the Preservation of Birds reports that wind farms built off the coast of Britain could be the final nail in the coffin for endangered seabirds. The Center for Biological Diversity calls the Altamont Pass wind farm in California a population sink for golden eagles as well as burrowing owls. As for solar farms, they produce an entirely different set of problems, although they also are very harmful for birds. In California, according to a federal report, massive solar arrays produce heat up to 900 degrees. When birds fly into those arrays, they simply burn up. Is that true? Is that even, has that ever happened? Has that ever fucked? This sounds literally made up. Can anybody actually prove that the birds get death beamed? They can be, wait, hold on. Let's see. The Audubon Society has something about it. Solar power is good for birds. Okay. Why do solar panels help birds? Okay. This doesn't say anything about them zapping them out of the air with a death beam. I'm sorry. Is this, are we, is this for real? Hello, copioid crisis. Indeed, we are in a copioid crisis. If you can find evidence that there, that like a death beam of, of, oh, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Remember, remember everyone. PragerU, the company that definitely, absolutely cares a whole lot about birds, which is why they regularly stand the meat industry. Probably take money directly from major meat industry. 30 minutes? Yeah. All right, Dylan's coming on after that. This. Mirrors are different from panels, though. Mirrors reflect into a central collector. So, yes, they can death laser a lot of things. Wait, but that's what he's saying. Panels. Yeah, all right. We'll do a short OK Buddy Mama at some point. Yeah, look, 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 look. Look, the image even shows panels. Look. Let's see. According to a federal report, massive solar arrays produce heat. Massive solar arrays. Up to 900 degrees. When birds fly into those arrays, they simply burn up. Building a solar farm is a lot like building any other kind of massive industrial arrays facility. Arrays or mirrors? I don't know about this. I, I don't know about this. Check the sources, but every time I do that... All right, let's check it. Here, we're doing it. We're doing it. I'm checking the sources. Where's the fucking sources? A solar energy plant is getting flack for killing birds. These one solar energy plant supposed to be the future of clean energy, but now federal wildlife officials want to pause their expansion until they get a handle on the growing number of bird deaths. It looks like a mirage in the middle of the Mojave Desert, but it's actually 170,000 sets of mirrors the size of garage doors called heliostats. How much power do you get? Okay. So this project will fuel 140,000 California homes. So effectively, one heliostat can power one California home. So Tom Doyle is the CEO of, of NRG, power. the company behind this 2.2 billion. So this area will power a fuckload of homes. Dollar solar project. It's now under fire because the heat it produces, up to 900 degrees, is charring the feathers of birds flying through, often causing them to crash and die. Workers on site call them streamers because of the smoke plume created when the birds ignite in midair. In a report on avian mortality at three Southern California facilities, Federal investigators found that these solar farms may act as a mega trap, attracting insects, which in turn attract insect eating birds, which are then incapacitated. More than 500 birds have died at one plant. And this is from 2014.
Yeah, this is from 2014. Die every year at another. And this farms is one. More than 100,000 birds each year. But solar farms are a new obstacle. One solar company spent $22 million to protect and relocate hundreds of rare desert tortoises and is now worried about the birds. Flight path for migrating birds, eagles, light sound. Okay, so this is a CBS report from 2014 about a single plant that was a single power plant that was designed in a specific way. This feels like a serious, some serious fear mongering going on here. I'm sorry. You have to clear the whole area of wildlife. For example, in order to That's construct source, is that the video. Ivanpah Solar Farm in California near the Nevada border, developers hired biologists to pull threatened desert tortoises from their burrow. Wait, we just read about this. The tortoises were it's then the loaded on the back of pickup trucks and caged in pens where many ended up dying. Solar farms also need yeah, millions and millions of gallons of water to clean the mirrors and to generate power. Since most solar farms are built okay. in the desert, we're talking about a precious resource already in short supply. When push comes to shove, water could become the real throttle on renewable solar energy, according to Michael Weber, professor of mechanics. And nuclear, right? Basically, every power requires water. That's a big problem. Yeah, you need water for everything. Engineering at the University of Texas at Austin. Then there's the issue of what to do with solar panels that wear out. <laughs> For numbers related to that, there was this article by the Danish Center of, of Energy Technologies that estimates that while wind farms may kill about 20,000 birds a year in the U.S., fossil fuel generating plants kill about 14 million birds a year. Nice. The panels contain lead and other toxic chemicals that can't be removed without breaking up the entire panel. Since it's far cheaper for solar manufacturers to just buy the raw materials than recycle old panels, those old panels end up in landfills, or as the New York Times discovered in a 2019 investigation, dumped in poor African nations. Yeah, that's because of the companies you people are supported by. That's because of the companies you people are supported by. What the fuck are you talking about? The recycling grift is pushed by conservative companies. Oh my God. Wind turbines may have an even worse disposal problem than solar panels. First, they are gigantic. A single blade can be longer than a wing on a jumbo jet. Second, they're made of fiberglass, which has to be cut by a diamond studded saw to be carted away on giant trucks. And as with solar panels, the only thing to do is bury them. Toxic materials and Maybe all. we should have a better actual, maybe we should actually have a recycling, a, a recycling industry in the United States. Maybe we should maybe we should actually recycle stuff instead of doing it on some speculative carbon credit bullshit. Ooh, imagine that. This is done as you can imagine in enormous pits creating yet another landfill problem. All this environmental Right, yeah, let's talk about the waste created by petroleum and coal. The literal industrial waste that poisons entire landscapes. Degradation is happening on a relatively small Not to mention that the pipelines that pump that stuff poison entire stretches of the world. Scale right this is now so dumb. Because we get less than 10% of our electricity from wind and solar sources. If we were really to embark on a wind and solar build out of the kind environmentalists advocate, the damage would be much, much greater. Consider this. Today's energy system requires just a half a percent of the land in the U.S., if we were to get all the energy we now use from wind and solar, at least 25% of all land in the U.S. would be required. Okay, but the land isn't the only problem. The land isn't the only problem. We have tons of land in the U.S. In fact, we have tons of desert land that can't be used for anything else. 5% or 0.5% of our land being used to belch out poison gas and fill the rivers with poison is pretty fucking bad. That's a lot of dead wildlife. Doesn't sound very green, does it? In comparison to petroleum products? I'm Michael Schellenberger, founder and president of Environmental Progress and author of Apocalypse Never for Prager University. Fucking bullshit. Yeah, death cult. The fucking death cult.